Now, when it comes to tuning yourself, there's a lot to consider. So let's talk about the pros and the cons and the reality of what tuning yourself is likely to entail. For starters, you have access to everything in the ECU. There is literally nothing that's off limits. You're also going to know exactly what has been messed with. This was a huge motivator for me because I want to know what's going on when it comes to the knock sensors especially. You can also customize stuff exactly how you want because you probably wouldn't want to normally pay somebody for 30 files just to play around with pedal feel. There's no waiting on your tuner to get back to you. You do save on the price of uh, access port or whatever else if you have to purchase a flashing device for whatever else you might have been considering. You have access to the patches which allow all kinds of cool stuff that we just talked about in the last video. There is a community of people to fall back on for help and assistance uh, within the CMOS Tools user group on Facebook. You will learn a lot in the process and getting to that end result can be very satisfying. On the flip side of all that, having access to everything also means there's going to be a lot of stuff to sift through. There's over 30,000 tables that you could potentially mess with. Now, this is mostly mitigated by using simplified definition files, which translate the binary files into readable tables for you. And these allow you to only see the important stuff, where you're probably only going to be touching 100 to 200 tables in all reality. And there's also no inherent need to touch every single one of those. If you are already tuned, you cannot use that file to build off of. You're going to need to start from a stock file because you cannot pull the raw binary file right out of the ECU. And even if you could, stealing tunes is frowned upon within the community, so don't do that. If it's like some that I've seen logs for, you probably really don't want to start with them anyways. Speaking of being already tuned, you're going to want to know if you can directly overwrite your existing tune or if you need to flash back to stock first. The safe answer is usually to flash back to stock and unmarry your current tuning device if necessary to be risk averse. In some cases, you do risk bricking the ECU or basically making it useless. If your car is not on a stock turbo or fuel system, then you're going to have to make some changes just for the car to be relatively safe early on. If your car is bone stock with maybe nothing more than a downpipe, you know, like a stage two GTI, you're gonna have a much easier time at least getting started just because you don't have to account for upgraded fuel system or bigger turbo and changing a whole bunch of maps because of that. Learning to tune the car yourself is very time consuming. It is not a one and done solution like off the shelf tunes are. If you're comparing against a custom tune, the fact is somebody who knows what they're doing is probably going to arrive at a good file much faster than what you will. Now, while you can save money on purchasing the tune and or device, that's almost for sure going to be offset by the additional fuel that you're going to burn just going out and logging on such a regular basis. I can tell you now that I've easily burned about $800 worth of fuel over 150 or so revisions up to now. Depending on how much free time versus free money you have, that might sway your decision as to whether that's a pro or a con. The reality is that changes you make can result in engine damage. It is vital to log everything under all conditions feasible. Another con is the reality of the situation is at some point, something will probably go wrong for you. It'll probably seem major at the time, and you could end up with a car that either doesn't start or whatever. This could be due to a few different reasons. Applying the wrong patch, cross-flashing the wrong file, failed flash for a multitude of reasons, forget to change something resulting in limp mode, change the wrong thing resulting in limp mode, or maybe the changes made just don't work as you're expecting. Now, if you do something exceptionally careless, there is the potential to brick the ECU in the flashing process to the point that it needs to be recovered via what's called a bench flash. People in the Facebook group have the ability to help with that if absolutely necessary, though it is rarely needed. I've never needed a bench flash, but I have run into an issue where I decided on a whim to flash my car right before going to work and the car wouldn't start. Turned out it was some silly setting that changed by default with, after a uh, CMOS tools update. Fixed that one silly thing and was good to go. I was definitely sweating bullets at the time though. Now, if you do decide to go through the tuning process, you're going to start out really timid at first, most likely. If you go slow and you take your time, you will get through it. You'll eventually get to the point of just YOLO tuning because the best way to find out is to fuck around. If you're smart about it, you can always just flash back to a known good file. So with all that stuff in mind, 
even if you're still on the fence of doing it yourself, keep following the series. You can play around with a stock file in the binary editor on your PC without ever spending a dime. No CMOS tools, no dongle, just playing around with the file to get familiar. There's zero risk at messing up your car up until you go to flash it. I did this myself, playing around with files for several months before just finally biting the bullet and going for it.